Okay, I'm going to play with these arrow away textures a little bit. I'm rendering in the background, so my computer is extra slow, but we'll see how it goes. I have two planes, one here that's going to be the floor, one here that's going to be an emitter. And if I hit the render button, we can see that we have a default daylight sky and default materials, which are just these gray colors. Um, Okay, that's, I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the sky. So we go here, Maxwell Render, um, Sun, no, Sky Options, Sky Type, None. Okay, now if we try to render it, we should get a complaint that there's no emitter. Because I don't think there is an emitter. Yeah, there we go, there we go. There's the red complaint. So... I want to put an emitter material here. Here I have a basic material which has got this layer BSDF and you know this default gray color. So I'm going to take the layer and I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to call for an emitter. I guess that was wrong. I need a layer, but I don't need the BSDF that comes with it. So I'm going to delete that. Then I'm going to call for an emitter and I will go with one of the incandescent lamp, 100 watts, just the hell of it. Um, you know, I'm actually not going to do that because it's, let's go with 3,500 Kelvin and let's go with 1,000 watts. Now, um, the exposure is set for daylight, so I don't think it's going to do well with a 100 watt lamp. That's why I turned it up to a 1000, but we'll see how this one does. So even this is a little on the dim side. And one of the reasons is that the camera exposure, if you select camera, it's like 750th of a second. If I go down here to Maxwell and just turn it down to, oh, I don't know, like a hundredth. And let's say we're looking at um, ISO 3200. I don't know. And how about we'll go with um, pinhole, just so I don't have to worry about focal distance. How does that look? It's pretty good. Okay. I'm going to get a little closer. So you get the idea. Y you know, we know where that emitter is, so I don't have to even have it on frame. Um, so let's see. Now, as far as this thing goes, let's look at the material. It's got one layer. It's got one BSDF. So I have over here these three textures that Arroway supplies. One is the diffuse, which is this color of the boards. The other is this thing, which has um, shades of gray in it, which I'm going to use as a roughness mask, I think, or, or possibly just a, a shininess mask. And the nail heads, <coughs> excuse me, the nail heads are white. And the nail heads here um, we could pretend that they're in the woods so far that we don't see them and they would be dark, or we could pretend that they would be catching glints of metal, I guess. So they could be shiny. Kind of have to decide for ourselves what we want to do. And then this guy over here, that's just pure altitude. We could use that as a displacement map or just as a bump map. You can see that the cracks between the boards are dark and the nail heads are dark. So I guess the nails are meant to be in in the wood somewhat. Um, so these are the three textures that we have to work with. One is um, uh, got a, a B for bump in its name, one has a D for diffuse in its name, and one has a G for, I really don't know why they put the G there, but um, has a G in its name. So let's see what's doing over here. First thing we want to do is um, put the diffuse map on. 
the, the main place that usually goes is reflection 90. So if we put it If we put it, uh, let's see, where do I have all that stuff? It's on my desktop, and yes, my desktop really does have all that crap on it. Um, Arroway, uh, board. There, here they are. These three, these three are the three that we're talking about. So there's the diffuse. So right now we have, um, and you know what? Just for the hell of it, because that yellow is a little distracting. I think I'm going. I'm talking about the the color of the of the light. I think I'm going to. Here it is. I think I'm going to um, let's have a look at that. Maybe bring it up to. Uh, I don't know, sixty five hundred, fifty seven hundred. Fifty seven hundred. So notice also that um, here is that little grid, which is a twenty by twenty grid, which is the default grid that Maya comes with. And look how big my floor is. I did that because I have a thousand centimeters from here to here. That floor is twenty centimeters by twenty centimeters. That little grid in the middle. Uh, this is a hundred centimeters by a hundred centimeters. This soft box. I don't even know what those translate into in terms of feet, but it seemed reasonable. So that's what I put there for it. Um, so let's see how this looks now, r right now I just have a, um, a, uh, a map in the diffuse in the reflection 90. So that's reflection 90 and it's got nothing but the map. Maybe let's see, we'll go up on the ISO. So let's see, what do we got going on here? Um, we'll stop that. So that's diffuse in reflection 90. It's not terrible right off the bat. Um, now, if I go back to for that it's easier to find in that window um, actually view select camera and the ISO I guessed 3200 um, maybe we can go I don't know 12 12,000 So, if we look again, should I try fire? Maybe I'll try fire. Um, if we look again, we can see that that's what happens when we have just the map in the diffuse reflection 90. So the next thing we want to, would want to try is, let's see what happens if we make the floor shinier. So right now, the floor defaults to um, roughness 99, which is pretty rough. It's as rough as it gets. 100 is actually um, too too rough. It's, it doesn't exist, but you're allowed to do it, but you should avoid it. Um, so let's say we make the floor, oh, I don't know, um, zero. What that's going to do is that's going to send very organized rays right into our eye. The rays from the light are going to hit the floor and they're not going to scatter randomly the way a diffuse thing does. They're going to bounce angle of incidence is going to very much equal angle of reflection and they're going to hit our eye. And um, the reflection 90 is going to be wood colored and the reflection, uh, so, so the reflection zero is going to be wood colored and the reflection 90 is going to be white. So it's going to be unchanged. White meaning it's like a, it's like a white mirror. It's like a, it's like a, a true mirror. So let's see if we say zero. 
see what we get. So there we go. We got we got we're, we're mostly getting reflection ninety in effect, and reflection ninety is showing us the reflection of the soft box. So what happens if we back off on the roughness and go like thirty? 40. So you basically have a kind of a, a tinted mirror. Um, so clearly we don't want that. Clearly we want a lot of roughness in the floor because we want to see the wood. Um, so 96, 99, those would all be fine. So let's put it up high again in the high 90s. And um, now... Let's see what happens. And, and by the way, when we're that rough, um, reflection 90 doesn't really matter that much. So if I put it into reflection 90, let's see. I think if I put a red, it might not make that even that much of a difference. Yeah, so I put a red in reflection 90. You barely notice it. That's because when things are that rough, um, we're not really getting grazing angle kind of stuff Uh looking at the light. Let's see if we were to look like really like really grazing. Let's see if we pick up some more red. Even there, it's just it's too rough to pick it up. If we were to lower the roughness down to see down at 80, we're starting to pick up the it starts to matter. Um so let's go back up. Let's leave it at 80. So here's the wood. There it is at 80. And we could, uh, let's go back to white. White, reflection 90 is a place where you're allowed to put pure white. Reflection zero, it's not really encouraged because um, it's too efficient a bounce of light. You're not absorbing any light and it just ricochets around, never dies. And it's not good for the renderer. You get noise. and. So um, you can see here that we're getting reflection 90, and it's kind of it has a washed out quality to it. Um, so often, what people do is they'll map the image again, the very same image, to reflection 90. Let's see what that does. So now we have a kind of a truer look as far as the way the thing goes. Um, and then sometimes what they do is they go down to the Maxwell image controls and in brightness, maybe they'll put a five or a 10 there. Let's say 10. So that means we're getting a slightly brighter reflection 90, same image though, same map. So if we were to look at, let's go back to um, this wood it's in the 80s now and let's take it down to 10. So there we have there's our wood colored mirror again and even though we're getting um, see, even if we go to zero we're getting basically it's kind of basically just a mirror at that point. So what we want to do is go back up to let's say 90 I don't know 8 something really high which means reflection 90 doesn't really matter much and now we want to put a shine on it. So let's say that we do that by putting a second layer on. So one of the things we could do is we could just take, so let's say that this is the uh, rough wood diffuse. And now we create another layer and we'll call it shiny. Right now, the layer defaults to gray, and it's on top, and it's opaque. There's nothing masking it, and it's not being added. That's why it seems to have replaced the wood. If we take this layer, and we go from blend mode normal to blend mode additive, then it's like we put a just a gray on top of the whole thing, and it's like we're doing a screen or a linear dodge, basically. It's more like a linear dodge than a screen, but same idea in Photoshop. So maybe what we want to do is we could try putting a texture map into, well, we could try just putting a mask into, into the shiny. So let's let that gray stay. But let's say that there's a, a mask right now. Oh, by the way, we can do this opacity. 
down quite low and down gone okay and opacity all the way up again so now we're getting that gray added in so now we let's put a mask and the mask will be mapped on and that's going to be um, this guy here and so right away we can see that um, parts of the wood are shinier than other parts through that mask. Um, we can uh, invert the mask. So now what was shiny is not and vice versa. That's another thing we can do. We can we can um, instead of using it as a mask, we could use it as a roughness. So image name, let's see if let's see what we want to do here. So rather than using it as a mask, which is the layer has a mask, I'm gonna right click break connection the mask no longer applies now we come down here to VSDF and maybe the roughness here should be uh, 30 and I should have done this earlier so I'm gonna go back and do the mask thing one more time and maybe instead of 30 I'll say 60 yeah okay so now I'm going to do the mask thing one more time. So we go up here and we say file and we're going to pick that mask. So now we're getting a better sense of shiny and not shiny. Um, and we can invert that. And it flips what's shiny and what's not shiny. Looks like the knots in the wood are not shiny now. Um, another thing that we can do is actually let's go while we're while we're here. Let's go up to um, global parameters, and we'll put the bump map in. Global bump mapping bump texture and we will say file this guy and that's this see how that works out so that's just a bump map and we're awfully close to it so it's kind of dramatic um, I could turn it down let's see global parameters maybe five give that a try at some point we might want to try displacement rather than bump mapping but at a distance it might work out just fine or when it's tiled more let's see what it looks like at a further distance probably bump mapping is adequate at that point so um, now, uh, so far this, we, let's try the shiny, let's try killing that mask again, right click, break connection, and let's come down here to BSDF, and let's say that the roughness, which is 60, gets mapped also. So wherever the map is white, the roughness will reach 60, and as the map gets darker, the roughness will get lower, which means it'll get shinier. So let's try putting that file and putting that there. So now what I've done is rather than masking, 
a single value of shininess. What I've done is I have um, not masked, but I've put the roughness as a map into the thing. So you can see different portions of the different portions of the uh, floor are getting different shininesses. It may be that um, we could try raising the overall shininess on the floor, roughness on the floor, to something more like 99, because the map is going to take it down again. So let's just see what it does. So there we are at 99 roughness. It's kind of not bad. Um, one thing we can do is go to this layer and remember the, op the weight of this layer can be turned down even though we're not masking it. We can turn it down this way. So that's like turning the shine down. Turning the amount of um Another thing we can do, turn it back up again. Another thing we can do, let's go back to here and let's go to the shininess. And let's say here we are mapping the shininess. So let's go here and let us say uh, invert. Let's see what we get. Hmm, that doesn't look very good look better the other way. So if we if we go to um, Photoshop and we load in the actual shininess, which is I think not this one. I think I got that one from a different folder. So I'm going to open it up on the desktop. and Arroway, and here's the shiny. Now, what we could do is um, we could make it really obvious. Because I'm not sure that the Arroway textures are being used in the way that, I'm not sure that I'm interpreting them the way that Arroway means for them to be interpreted. I'm not sure exactly what we're supposed to be doing with this. So we could just try uh, levels, and we could make it really obvious. just try that save that I'm gonna save it as a tiff because I'm I got these layers in there and you can leave the the you know adjustment layer as is you don't have to flatten it and then come back here and then I looks like I got a JPEG off of that arrow away site so I'm going to replace it with Here's the tiff I just made. So it's much more obvious what's going on there. Now, it could be that right now it looks like a wet floor. And really we don't want the floor that shiny so we really we really don't want the um the values to go below a certain number so we can do it a kind of a crude way here with um maxwell image controls preview turn that on and then have a look i think we can make this larger and then we can say rgb min I don't like using this because it just um, crushes the color. I'd rather use levels and things like that in Photoshop. But um, you can see that as I
well, as I raise it, you can see it behaves less and less like it's wet and more like a kind of a sheen to it. So let's put it back down to something like that. And then um, again, we can come back over to the shiny and we can, you know, we probably don't want it at that intense a thing. So there it is, less intense. And, you know, just for the hell of it, let's try masking it through the very same thing that's controlling the shininess. So let's say file and over here and let's get that tiff. So that's much more control over the extent of it. And also, even though we are, um, even though we are uh, masking it, we can still turn down the opacity and the two work together. So there's lower opacity on the shine. And um, just as a final thing, hope this doesn't crash my machine because um, I'm rendering a big thing on the in the background. Instead of saying global bump mapping, maybe I'll say um, turn that off again. There's the floor without the bump map, and then I'm going to add a, a, a what do you call it? displacement layer. And then I'm going to say pre-tessellated. you got to read up on the different parameters here. I'm a little kind of forget them myself. But um, I'm going to say height um, 0.5 centimeters, absolute height. So it's in centimeters and not some relative percentage thing. Um, offset 0.5, that's what we want. That means middle gray does nothing. Things darker than middle gray punch in. Things lighter than middle gray punt, pull out. That that displacement looked like it was middle gray and down, so that should leave everything alone and punch holes in there. Uh, and then we got to actually grab the texture file. Here it is, and that was it. And hopefully, this will work in Fire. I'm going to uh, send a real render and I'm also going to turn up the um, height to let's say let's go for it say 2 so we'll render that in the official renderer see what that does hopefully Two isn't going to break the bank as far as displacement goes. Um, and by that, I just mean my RAM is going to hold out considering I'm rendering on another machine and stuff like that. So there you go. That gives you some sense of what you can do with these floors. Um... I'll show you one last thing. There's probably a better way to do this, but I'm a little uh, kind of forgetful about how to do it. So I'll just show you the way that I remember. Um, these floors are, are mapped on a square right now, and they're probably uh, able to repeat. So I'm going to hunt down every place where I use a texture map, and I'm going to uh, go to the 2D placement node and change it. Um, so the first thing we're doing is a displacement. And here's a map, it's file 8, place 2D is this guy here, and I'm going to say repeat uh, hmm, 3, and 3. And then I always click that button there, it seems to get me back. Um, so now, or that one again, so now I'm going to go to the uh, shiny, that's file 7. 
that has a place 2D texture node. And what did I say, three? I think so, three and three. And I'm gonna click there and click there again. And now here, uh, here's a file five. And that's got a place node. And I said three and three. There, there's a better way of doing this, I'm sure, but. And then I'm going to find the uh, wood and that's here and that's mapped twice. And that's once here, three and three. And then back to, let's see, the reflectance 90, that's another place where it's mapped. And that's here and that's uh, three and three. Well, that was kind of tedious. Hopefully I got them all. Um, so now if we render, what I should have done, what I believe I've done is I've increased the tiling by three on all the textures. So it, the boards should effectively be smaller on the same repeating triple each, three times each on the, um, on the wood. And it looks like I did in fact do that correctly. And that's what we're getting. So I'll just let this go for a couple of minutes and fill in a bit. Um, that's basically it. It's getting to look kind of nice there. The displacement, the quality of the displacement map has a lot to do with the um, original, how much work it has to do is based on how much this original thing is subdivided. Like this floor, if you look, is a plane and it's 10 by 10. I think if I make it 100, by a hundred, uh, so that each of these tiles is smaller, then the displacement map will have less work to do as far as achieving fidelity to the texture when it breaks up those large tiles. And I think it'll be happier and it'll produce a more refined result faster, I think, or at least maybe it'll be a more detailed result. I guess we're gonna find out seems to be a slightly slower result. I'm using this pre-tessellation uh, option. You have pre-tessellation and on the fly. One is good for saving RAM and the other is good for saving time. And I think pre-tessellation is not good for saving RAM. But I think it's a little faster. So I was kind of expecting that breaking it up would be make it happier and kind of make it perform a little faster. I'm not sure if it's just if that's the case or not. I'm also, as I mentioned, rendering in another window. So I'll let this go for another minute or two, see what it does. So the trick is with all of these things is you look at the images and try to decide um, what would be a good use for the various textures that you have provided. The basic thing when you're mapping a parameter is that texture maps generally go from black to white. And when they go to white, they achieve 100% of whatever the slider specifies. And when they go black, they go to zero. So um, you can think of the slider or you can think of the map as a tech as a percentage from 0% to 100% that gets multiplied by the slider value. So a map can make things shinier than the slider, but a map can never make things rougher than the slider value. 
So the voxelation is finally done. And here comes the triple tiled floor with the um, finer tessellation on the floor originally. And I don't know, it's looking pretty good. I, I didn't save an image, so it's hard to compare. It's hard to compare whether it's what it's exactly doing or not, but it looks pretty good. That's 100%. I'll let this go for another minute or two, and then I'll end this video. Waiting to go from SL5 to SL6. There it is. That was 6. It's looking pretty good. I don't, I, I don't know if it's coming out. I should have rendered it at a higher res. I don't know if it's coming out good enough on your um, video. Because it's a lower resolution than what I'm actually seeing in front of me. But I think you get the idea. This is at 200, I, I, you know, I'm using the mouse wheel, and this is 200% uh, right, that's 300%, 200% right there, so, still you get a, you get a sense of it, here it's waiting to go from 6 to 7 right now, um, I'll let it go to 7, there, that was 7, 